my name's Mark Fulcher, and in this clip I'm going to show you how I examine a footballer with foot pain. So we're going to start with Martine up on her feet, and we're going to get her to do a little bit of walking, so up and down. So uh, as with any lower limb joint, it's important to assess for an antalgic gait, or see if there's any problems walking. Um, one of the things I always like to do in athletes presenting with foot pain is to get them to do some hopping. Good functional test and the incidence of stress fractures in elite athletes and footballers is uh, quite common. So if we could ask you to just do some hopping on your left foot. And we're looking to see if she has any pain or problems or apprehension about doing that. So an athlete with a stress fracture will have a great deal of difficulty doing that and will feel very apprehensive about that or reproduce their pain. So in a similar way to assessing the ankle, we're also going to get her to stand up on her toes and do some steps side to side on your toes. On your heels, same thing, and then on the outsides of your feet and insides of your feet. So it's a good functional way to assess ankle and foot range of motion. For example, someone with a tarsal coalition will have a real restriction on ankle and foot inversion and eversion. So from there I'm going to ask Martine to come have a sit up on the end of the bed. So in this position it's easy to uh, have a look at the foot to assess for any swelling, assess for any scars or skin changes or any asymmetry. Martin has a degree of hallux valgus, um, but otherwise everything looks quite normal. An athlete with, for example, a Liz Frank injury will have gross swelling over the foot. Uh, there may be some old bruising after a, a forefoot sprain. There may be some swelling around the great toe. If you pull your toe up towards you, you can see the extensor tendon of the toe here. Someone with an effusion around the, the first MTPJ, you lose that, that tendon, you can't see it quite so well or as defined. So if you just relax again, Martin. So there's some important landmarks to palpate around the foot. I start over the navicular tuberosity, so it's a fairly obvious prominence around the medial foot. So that can be tender in itself if there's an injury to a navicular synchondrosis. I follow that over the dorsum of the navicular the end spot there, so that's a spot that's important to palpate if you think the athlete may have a navicular stress fracture. The base of fifth metatarsal is also an important bony landmark and we can have both stress fractures and acute fractures there. Palpating through the midfoot is important, particularly around the Liz Frank interval, so is there any tenderness or problems there. Then palpating along the metatarsal shafts and down over each individual metatarsophalangeal joint. So is there any pain or tenderness over those joints palpating through? Athletes with a, a neuroma may have tenderness and altered sensation between each adjacent web space. So that's an important landmark to palpate. And in a minute we'll palpate the plantar surface of the foot, but at the moment just the dorsum. Having done that, I then compress the forefoot. That's often quite provocative. Very provocative in athletes with an inflammatory arthropathy or inflammatory foot pain. And then I am looking for evidence of a neuroma applying a force between adjacent metatarsals, feeling for any pain or clicking sensations. So having felt, I'm now going to move the foot. So to move the subtalar joint, we lock it into neutral and then move the calcaneus side to side. So we're jogging the subtalar joint. I then like to do a combined movement of subtalar and forefoot movement, looking for any pain or restriction, and then forefoot movement, seeing whether there's any pain or restriction. If you think someone's injured their midfoot, we can take that into a, a more forcible position, adding some overpressure and seeing whether those movements are painful. Then it's useful to assess the movements at the metatarsophalangeal joint, so just with the athlete nice and relaxed, how does the first ray move? And we'll look at functional hallux limitus or functional hallux movements when she's sitting down further back on the bed. So those movements all generally are important to assess. So now I'm going to ask you to shuffle backwards, Martin. So I mentioned functional hallux limitus, so we're looking how well the great toe moves. So at rest, she's got reasonable first MTP dorsiflexion. But if we add some pressure underneath her first ray and then dorsiflex her great toe, there's very little movement there. So that's functional hallux limitus. In this position, we can also palpate underneath or in the plantar surface of the metatarsal phalangeal joints, which can become painful and irritated. 
And we can also palpate the sesamoid bones underneath this first metatarsophalangeal joint. So we can palpate the medial sesamoid and the lateral sesamoid, which can become uh, chronically irritated and painful. I'm going to roll onto your, your tummy there, Martine. And I'm going to have a look at the plantar fascia. So patients who get plantar fascia, dysfunctional plantar fasciitis, typically have pain around the medial calcaneal tuberosity of their heel. So when you palpate on that landmark, they will often feel very uncomfortable and you'll reproduce their pain. By dorsiflexing the great toe, we can also feel the tension of the plantar fascia. So if someone has a partial thickness or a full thickness rupture to the plantar fascia, we'll feel a loss of tension and a difference between the, the symptomatic and the asymptomatic foot. So we'll, we'll see a clear difference there. While she's lying prone, we can also palpate around the Achilles tendon insertion. So in younger athletes, we can see that they may get Severs disease or attraction apophysitis around where the tendon attaches onto the heel. In older athletes, we might find that there's some chronic tendinopathy or insertional tendinopathy around where the, the tendon attaches onto the calcaneus. And then really, we can find that there may be a calcaneal stress fracture, and so the calcaneus generally is very tender to touch. And when we compress the calcaneus or squeeze it between our hands, that can become very painful. So that's how I examine the foot of an injured footballer.